Hey guys, such a nice view, isn't it? I love it. Two GT6s, 66, 72, so six years apart. I like them both anyways. Uh, hi, so welcome back to another episode of the Rusty Beauty's Restorations. And today we're gonna be working on the bonnet. So I'm thinking we can put the fender, the other door. It's sitting there, but it's not bolted. So we need to bolt it on. In the last episode, we finished working on the valance. We assembled it and we mounted it here, but we still have to adjust it. But like I mentioned in the last episode, we need to have the fender and all the components of the car in place so we can adjust everything. We're gonna adjust the gap of the bonnet up there. We're gonna adjust the door gaps. Then we're gonna adjust the valance. And when we make everything fit properly, then we can click everything in place and uh, then we can start taking out panels, working underneath and putting the panels back. And by working underneath, I mean this wheel well, which has lots of problems here. It's missing a corner here. It's rotten over there. So we will see how much of it we're gonna replace, how much of it we're gonna repair. The other side is even worse. It's uh, hidden now, you can't see it, but as you can see, the fender is mounted with clicos, so we can take it out and work on the wheel well and then put it back. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, <laughs> There's some dents here that we're gonna need to address. You know what, maybe that's a good idea now that we don't have the fender, we can punish this a little bit. Yeah, actually, let's do that. All right, so that wasn't in my plans today, but since I saw it, and now the fender is not here, so I can reach underneath and put a dolly in. Maybe it's a good idea to to do that. Oh. And I actually know how this happened. So, you see this? This is how it happened. Huh. So, actually before we do anything, we need to flip this bracket around because I believe it is in the wrong orientation. So look at that. It's even fresh, so it keeps hitting there. And look at this. Woo, not good. So I think this tensioner is upside down, isn't it? Even here, it is super close to the fins of the alternator. So I think it needs to be flipped around and um, put on the back of this eye of the alternator. And this curve then is going to go down and around this alternator. Well, it's worth trying, but definitely that's not how it goes. On my Spitfire, I think I did that in the very beginning. One of these clamps here was pointing up and the head of the screw hit my bonnet did the same thing so we have to be really careful sometimes also people leave stuff on the battery and that hits and uh, it's pretty tight here in these engine bays even though it, they look big because the wheel wells are not here but actually it's pretty tight that's why for gt6 they made this slope on the bonnet so it can fit this bigger engine because on spitfires the engine ends here <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, let me try and flip this bracket and see if that's gonna work. Well, that doesn't work because it's hitting here. But what I figured is the early GT6s came with generators and I'm actually right. So I found this picture here. I don't know how well you can see, but obviously I'm right, the bracket is on the rear end of that eye and the curve is going down not up but this is for generator so this has been converted to an alternator but whoever did it didn't do a great job so we're gonna have to 
either modify this bracket or figure out some other way. So the only way I see is to mount it the same way, but make it shorter because I don't think we need so much adjustment here, right? This is like crazy amount of adjustment. So if we shorten it at least to here, that's gonna be fine. Let's cut off two inches and we're gonna weld the end back there. That's the only way I see, I don't see another way. So we said we want to remove two inches, so it doesn't really matter where we're gonna cut it, as long as we remove two inches exactly, right? Two inches on this arm or on this arm? <laughs> They're different length. How to file properly was one of the first metal working lessons that I learned from a friend of mine in Bulgaria. Unfortunately, he passed away. His name was Georgi. And when I first started filing something, and I did this, and then he told me, listen, <laughs> you're making so many motions and using just a little bit of the file for no reason. You don't need to do that. You can go from one end of the file to the other and make much less motions, much less effort, and still do a lot of work at the same time. So every time I file something now, I remember about him. Okay, that should be good. Let's see how this is gonna fit now. Okay, that's much better now. So there's still more room for adjustment, but if it hits the end, then it, <laughs> it will mean that you need to change your belt anyways. If it stretches so much that it hits the end, then you need to change it anyways. <laughs> okay, so let's close the bonnet and see how close this is to the bonnet now. Plenty of room now. I can even put my finger there. So it's like half an inch, but <laughs> just enough. Okay, now we can planish a little bit. So you see how bad this is? So this is the dent that was caused by the alternator, but I don't know what's with all these here, but let's see if we can fix them. And we can see them right away. So these are a little bit stretched. We have to shrink them either with the hammer or maybe with the shrinking disc, but I think they are pretty high for a shrinking disc. So let's try with the hammer. So I'm gonna put this dolly underneath and let's try with the small one first. might need to do heat shrinking. Yeah. This is pretty, this is stretched pretty good. The reason 
why they're not going down because they're stretched so let's try the shrinking disc my shrinking disc is pretty small I might need to invest in a bigger one but let's see small one I think it moved We have a low spot now, a few low spots, but these we're gonna try to bring up with the, with the slapper. I don't know where this rubber is coming from. I think it's from my shrinking disc. I have to clean this. Yeah, you're right. This is where I should have started from. <laughs> okay, I think we brought the high down, but there's some areas that are low now. So just a little bit here on the small one, and then we're gonna block it and see. here let's see so now my slapper that's a problem a little bit because of this shape I don't have a torch hot enough to hit this and bend it so I'm gonna have to be careful not to hit with this part just with the end which is pretty light but hopefully it's gonna the alternator is on my way a little bit <laughs> to open the bonnet for this one. Let's try it here. Of course I have to get rid of all the paint around to be able to do it properly because now the paint here is higher. We have two layers of paint and two layers of Primer, I guess.
All right, that's where I'm gonna leave it. It's not the best, like there's still a little bit of lows, like you can see them here and here. Yeah, this is a little bit low too, but we're talking about probably 64 of an inch or if not less. Uh, in general, it turned out pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good as a piece on its own, but if it's higher than there, I don't know. <laughs> when we strip all the paint, we're gonna figure it out. Maybe the whole area is higher or lower, or I don't know. So I'm not gonna spend any more time here. I spent already probably an hour here and I'm gonna stop for now. Well, you know what guys? I figured that now that we are on dent removal subject, we should deal with these as well. We have to deal with, the, with them at some point, so I'd like to do it now because I wanna try and use my uh, dent pulling machine. And I think this is a good opportunity for that. So there's a dent here and a few dents here on the nose. So yeah, let's do that. So it's gonna be a dent removal video, I guess. Okay, first of all, let me get rid of the paint here and we're gonna go from there. Okay, so I found the little one here as well. This we know about, there's another one here. There's another one here. Wow, the whole nose, the whole nose of the car is dented. But that's fine. All right, so this is the spot puller that uh, I bought, I don't know, years ago. And it sat in a box for probably two, three years before I even opened it. And when I opened it, the first time I used it, I screwed it up. And it was my fault. Well, partially my fault. What happened was uh, I also bought this cheap TIG welder to learn how to weld. And this TIG welder is designed to work in 110 or 220, whatever you want to use. And as, as you know, in North America, uh, we mainly use 110 or 115 volts, whatever. But we also have option to use 240 without going into too many details. We have both options and this plug is what we normally use for 110. And this plug, for example, this is the plug for my uh, MIG welder, that's for uh, 240. For 240, we have many different plugs depending on the current that your unit draws, but this is one of them. So, of course, if your machine works on 110, you have to use a plug like this. If, you, if it works on 240, it, you need to use a plug like this or a different one that is designed for 240. But this little machine, somebody smart decided that instead of uh, making you change the plug depending on what you want, they just gave you this adapter. So this goes into a 240 and then you can plug in your unit here and now your unit can work in 240. If you want to use it as 110, you just unplug it here and plug it into 110. But this is like a suicide cable because when you plug it into 240, now here you can plug in a device that is designed for 110. And that's exactly what happened. I didn't pay attention. I had this plugged in into a extension cord and then I just decided to go and plug in my spot welder. And I did. And the first time I used it, it went poof and it stopped working properly. It still worked, but not very well. So something happened inside, then I opened it, I tried to fix it and I couldn't. So finally a friend of mine took it to his friend and uh, it took them a while to find parts because it's coming from China and he couldn't find the parts from the manufacturer, but he was able to buy it from uh, the local eBay or so. 
finally I have the machine back here and, and I tried it the other day it worked well in some areas some in some other areas doesn't work very well and I don't understand why but uh, it's definitely doing something because before it wasn't doing anything <laughs> so what we can do with that is we can use this attachment uh, tuck it to the dent and then pull it but we can also use another attachment to heat spots like heat very rapidly a spot and then cool it down and that's how we shrink with it so we can use it for pulling and for shrinking you can also weld those to a body line and put those uh, like comb puller and pull them but we'll get there for now let's see if we can start pulling those dents here so first we have to weld the ground and i'm gonna ground i'm gonna weld it here because i know that this is a solid metal that i put there so it's gonna work so how you weld it is like you basically put it there So now the ground is welded and I can play with the settings of the machine. You can do manual, but for whatever reason, the manual doesn't work for me at all. Yeah, I can't. So it's only in auto, but that's fine. So let's see if it is going to work. My ground keeps falling off, so but it works, right? It pulled it out, so we're gonna clean this up a little bit now, and we're gonna go again. I think I figured it out. It kept being hit and miss and uh, probably every one out of 10 times it was actually welding itself to the metal. But then I think I figured it out and, and I'll show you what I do differently now, but I was able to pull this one as far as I could. Like I can't pull it more than that for whatever reason, but it's still much better than what it was before. Then I came here and started working on this one, but then I realized that this one is actually part of the big one and I want to do this one together with you, if we can. Then there was another one here, which came out. The problem with this kind of uh, dent pulling is that the finish at the end is like this. I can't make it better than that, but still that's very little amount of body filler that it requires. Then I came and I repaired one here and now we have one right here. So I think this one I practiced enough so I should be able to show you now what I do. All right, so, as, so you can see the dent there. I put it in such a way that the light is actually showing it really well. And I come and I sand it. And that shows me where the dent is, like I can see clearly. And now I figured it needs to be in very short pulses. And also I don't push. Before I was pushing to make a good contact, but actually it turns out it needs to barely touch. And once just touch it without pushing, short pulse, and it goes, and then you can twist it. 
and it comes off or sometimes it comes off in its own but most of the time I have to twist it actually and I prefer to do that instead of it coming it on its own because it pulls a piece of metal with it when it comes on its own I can see that it's still low, but let's sand it and see if it made any difference. Yeah, you see? Now it is much smaller than before. That's what it looks like. It's not really nice, eh? I know it's not really great. Like I can see, especially from this angle, you can see how the light goes up here. And this means that we have an area here that is high, but I need to be able to pull on this, like weld something, pull on it and hammer this on top so it can go down but it is what it is that's how far it can go with uh, with this spot puller let me try this one as well and then i'm gonna attack this one i will see if i can put a dolly inside yeah not really but i can reach but i'm not sure i can put a dolly there but if i can put a dolly i'm gonna try with the slapper first and then with this if i have to This one didn't work very well. I might come back here with the spot puller, but that one, wow. I'm actually surprised that it worked that well, only with the planishing hammer. I mean, I keep calling it planishing hammer, only with the slapper and the dolly, but I was able to put a dolly underneath. So whenever I can put a dolly underneath, I would always prefer to do that instead of this because here i even came back here a little bit with the um what is it called with the slapper and a dolly underneath and i think i got it a little bit better than before before the light was making an eyebrow anyway i'm happy that this one worked i'm getting gooder <laughs> no better or the bestest i'm the bestest <laughs> so now this one we took care of a little bit with the slapper, but you can see how this one and that one are really flat here in the front. So I put the dent out, but the dent is not only here, the dent also pulled all this metal with it that needs to come out. So the only way to pull these out is with the slapper, I guess. I'll keep slapping them and I'll show you at the end if it works well all right that's the best i can do for beginner planisher skills i don't think i did too bad the rest is gonna be body filler but these are not flat anymore so that's where we're gonna leave it well looks like we spent a lot of time dealing with dents today <laughs> And this one 
looks pretty good. So, anyways, I think we're gonna call it a video here, even though it's not much progress, but at least uh, there's something for you to watch. I'm gonna be away this weekend, so I'm not gonna have a lot of footage or time to edit a video for the weekend, so maybe that's what I'm gonna post. I don't know if it is gonna be an interesting video or boring, but it is what it is, so I'm gonna cut it here. Thanks again, guys, for watching, for commenting, for subscribing, for sharing, for supporting me on Patreon and through PayPal. That's really appreciated, guys. If you wanna find details, about how you can do that you can follow the link in the description to my patreon page so with that said guys i'm gonna sign off and i'll see you in the next one bye